Last year, we looked back at the history of Minecraft, but in this video, we're looking to the future. After 11 years, just who exactly is this new generation of Minecraft YouTubers leading the charge in 2021? Dream, Bad Boy Halo, Tommy Init, Tubbo, Technoblade, Quackty, these are all likely familiar names to you if you've been around the block this past 12 months. And today, I'm going to be explaining how each one of those rose to fame and what makes them formidable not only as individuals, but also together as a new wave of creators. How are they using creativity, community, and narrative to push the boundaries of Minecraft entertainment? Welcome back to Quebec Connor. My name is Connor, and today we break down and analyze what exactly makes this new Minecraft scene tick. Who are the main players? What can we learn from it all? And where is it all going as we head into this next year? With things like the Dream SMP, MCC, and collaborations aplenty, it's safe to say Minecraft has found a second life. Some would say even larger than the last. And speaking of being bigger than before, a certain new gaming platform has also grown quite a lot since we last spoke about it. Core is the sponsor of today's video, where you can download, play, and literally create your own games absolutely free. Because it's powered by Unreal Engine, it can host a huge array of games and genres, like we're talking first-person shooters to RPGs all the way to simulators, some created by players just like you. I was checking out Arsenal of Guns earlier with some friends, a player made competitive FPS, and had a blast. The controls were clear and the gameplay loop was exciting. I can really see why 35,000 people have played this game already. You can totally tell the devs know what they're doing. And new games get published every day. Build, battle, explore, or take to the easy to use creation tools to make your own experience. They even offer cash prizes for winners of their game jams. Just this December, they began their holiday jam, which offered $10,000 in cash prizes to 10 different winners. There's never been a better time to get started. Core is completely free, so be sure to download the launcher by clicking on the link in the description or the pinned comment. Thanks to them for the support. Back to Minecraft. So, before we get onto the big guys, we need to look at Minecraft's resurgence once again real quick. What caused all of this? Well, in my documentary, we looked at a span of four different generations of Minecraft YouTuber from 2009 to 2020. Now, the exact number of generations can definitely be debated, but it's widely considered to follow this general pattern. The first were OG founders, who discovered and began to cover the game, setting best practices and baseline concepts for future channels, things like Let's Plays. Next were trend capitalizers, who began to recognize the pull of the game and for many reasons, including big pushes on watch time and content formatting, created channels which exploded and made them into internet personalities and online stars. Then came the third, demographic appealers. These are the guys that began to recognize their strengths in appealing to a specific demographic. They began to become recognized by young children across the world for their more specialized content. We're talking super stardom here, millionaires and huge numbers, multiple channels, editors, voice actors, script writing, the whole shebang. Then Minecraft kind of simmered down for a little while. Fortnite kicked up and we didn't see much more until 2019 and 2020 where we have the performance pushes, or what I called it in the doc, the tournament generation. The performance pushes are the ones that have been playing the game for fun for so long that their sheer skill or knowledge within it is impressive and entertaining in of itself. Stacked with record numbers of active YouTube users, a rehype in Minecraft, and likely the first full generation to have grown up consuming YouTube content, these creators have formulated a recipe for success that has not only dragged Minecraft out of the dirt, but risen it to new heights as we re-embrace nostalgic scenarios and history repeats itself once again. We all know Minecraft suffered a little bit of a drought here on YouTube during 2018, but at the dawn of its 10th anniversary, thanks to things like SMP Live and SMP Earth embracing community, PewDiePie covering a full let's play of the game, Minecraft Monday sparking newfound hype for live competition, and the rise of speedrunning amongst many other things, we've seen a big spike in relevance for the block game once again. And now, many new faces are rising to the top, working in tandem with other older creators and riding this wave to newfound success. But who are these guys? What did they spot that no one else did? And what did they do so right? Now, if we're going to talk about anybody, we have to start with Dream. 
the YouTube superstar of 2020. Dream arguably grew popular from two types of content, Cursed Minecraft and Seed Finding. Cursed Minecraft is fairly self-explanatory, and the latter initiated a snowball effect for growth on his channel once he and others alongside him, through deep block-by-block -block analysis, obtained PewDiePie's World Seed. After this, he took the momentum and ran with it, indulging us all in his Minecraft butt challenges and nail-biting manhunts. Dream has soared to the top with 15 million subscribers in the last year and can safely be said to be the most relevant Minecraft creator as we pass into 2021. Despite a fair few controversies directed towards him regarding cheating and stands, Dream has really redefined what it means to be a Minecraft creator, not only making unorthodox, normally bland content much more enjoyable, but also by cultivating a large community of close, smaller channels that have blown up since gathering together. Dream also reaches out and regularly collaborates with larger mainstream YouTubers, not just Minecrafters either. People like the Sidemen, James Charles, MrBeast, MatPat, Pokimane, and PewDiePie. He's even interacted with TikTok stars like the D'Amelios. My point is, there are plenty of well-put-together videos out there explaining the reasons behind Dream's rise to popularity and the effects that that has had. So we'll gloss over most of it here, but the key thing to gleam from all of this are the strategies that he used. Dream grew up with YouTube and was likely able to plan and manage his rise in viewership a little easier than the giants that came before him. He was able to adapt his content, learn from history, and study the algorithm beforehand to prepare engaging, topical videos. His manhunts are a great example of this, over an hour long in some cases and attaining 50 million views. With good pacing, snappy edits, and tense moments spaced throughout, viewers are less likely to skip in fear of missing the next big troll or awesome trap, thus drastically increasing retention over a long period too. It's a really great content format and something that is admired by plenty of creators. Even his profile picture is subtle genius, easy to replicate and simplistic for merch designs. His skill is also notable. Although coming into question more recently, there's no denying that Dream is instinctive and reactive. He knows the game inside out, to the point that he was pulling out moves and glitches in Manhunt that most players had never even really thought of before, or some that were only really ever circulated around the Reddit without much use. He brought them to the limelight, and even during other challenge videos demonstrated his mastery of the craft. If you ask people more often than not, they'll say Dream's skill is what makes them watch, and more importantly, what makes people subscribe. And that's no coincidence either, because as I've said, competition and skill is a huge part of this current generation. Following closely behind him is the aptly named Dream Team. George Not Found, Bad Boy Halo, Sapnap, and Antfrost, all unique creators in their own right whose personalities captured the hearts of the community as they one by one joined Dream's Manhunt lineup. Bad Boy Halo was already a fairly sizable creator whom Dream knew from back in the day. He started creating content on his current channel in 2012. Over the years, his videos evolved, his format transformed, eventually becoming centralized on banning hackers on servers and investigating all sorts of ridiculous ban appeals that he would receive. At this point in mid-2019, he would begin making more content with Skeppy, becoming a content duo as they pranked the players of their server and participated in the early Minecraft Monday events. George Not Found has been uploading content since 2019, relatively recently all things considered. He and Dream first met as staff members on the server Munchie MC back in 2016. Dream actually helped George come up with his username once they received a 404 page Not Found error. George's first known video is Minecraft Enderman Destruction Timelapse, but quickly after he began uploading videos featuring Dream and the rest of the crew. Nowadays, he's known as the quirky, random, often excitable member of the group. While at times being reserved and quiet, he can get incredibly loud. But just as an example, back in his earlier videos, you can really see the comparison between his less enthusiastic self and more uh, excitable version. What's up guys, it's George here. We coded it so that every minute we lose one inventory slot and they never come back. We created insanely difficult Minecraft zombies that spawn constantly around us. If anything, this shows a lot of character growth. Nowadays, he's a lot more comfortable sharing his personality, and a lot more comfortable when making content in general. In fact, he's taken strides to ensure his content isn't just copycat ideas from Dream's channel. They worked together and came up with completely original angles for each channel's set of videos. Now he's an excellent comic relief and partner in crime to Dream.
Sapnab only has 8 videos starting in 2019. He began collaborating with Dream, George and Bad Boy with Antfrost coming along later for the 4 man manhunt. The Dream team together across over 8 different channels, Dream, Dream XD, George Not Found and his second channel, Bad Boy Halo and Sapnap have garnered over 1.8 billion views in the last year alone. Just, just think about that number for a second. Insane. But completely understandable. When Dream got large numbers, he didn't just suddenly start inviting anyone and everyone to his videos. He carefully chose friends of his. He was smart about it. He didn't invite people he would end up having awkward situations or arguments with. He chose people he had history with or great chemistry. And that is why one by one built them up into an entertainment powerhouse. At such heights, it wasn't long before they began to livestream too. Playing Minecraft was fun, of course, but they needed a reason, a purpose. I mean, in the eyes of everyone, Dream was growing a community here, and so he took it a step further by starting an SMP. Something that grew larger than anyone could have ever expected. On July 4th, 2020, Tommy Init was added to the Dream SMP, causing chaos and being rash at every turn. Dream actually logged on at one point to punish him. His anarchal and mischievous nature captured the audience, and he even pursued and killed Dream at one point. His loud nature couldn't be stopped, it was just too entertaining, and Tubbo was invited along not long after. The pair had risen to broader popularity after playing in SMP Earth, Minecraft Monday, and MCC, before truly exploding while streaming the Dream SMP on Twitch. Seriously, these guys just casually clock in 100 concurrent viewers almost every day, in some cases holding that number for 2-3 to three hours. Their most recent Le Manberg War had Tommy sitting at 400,000. For reference, that's almost as many as when Ninja streamed Fortnite with Drake. Tommy has been at the center of many of the server's storylines too, from trying to retrieve his music discs to starting all out war and being banished. For this, he's become a community icon and a creator that the younger viewers can live vicariously through. Now, I'll have to admit, when I first heard about Tommy during an MCC when he awkwardly spoke with Vicstar, I didn't really get what his shtick was. But seriously, numbers on both YouTube and Twitch have been out of their mind, and numbers don't lie. I think that's partly related to his skills as an entertainer, and his ability to somehow play to any conversation or situation he's involved in. He's an attention attractor, loud and sometimes immature, but it's his relatability with chat, his expressive persona and comical outbursts that win over the audience and gain him those huge numbers. He's also a teenager, the youngest member of the SMP, which definitely helps with connecting to the younger audience in an easier way to say a 25 year old could. His mischievous nature is fun to watch, his antics are always laced in satire, and the occasional vulgar spout can definitely make him feel a bit more taboo or mature like the others. In fact, a key component to Tommy's success has been the way he blends with or ironically bounces off not just adults, but internet celebrities in general. To date, he's spoken with PewDiePie, Pokimane, Ninja, Mr. Beast, all live and to varying degrees of awkwardness. You know the internet loves cringe after all. You also have this whole perspective of having a person who, again, grew up with YouTube interacting with some of these legendary personalities. If you're a kid sitting there watching this, you're living vicariously through Tommy. It makes you question, what would you say? What would you do in the face of your favorite creator? Imagine what you'd say if you were playing Among Us with PewDiePie. And then Tommy just breaks all expectations in a sensational way. You know, no, no, I'm actually gonna be just completely and utterly content not wearing cat ears if that's... All right. Man, does he know people in here? It's amazing how people just come in in a group they don't and just speak like that. In a way, the polar opposite to Tommy is Tubbo. Together, they are best friends, a duo, a partnership. Back in the day, Tommy often streamed on the Minecraft server Hypixel, when one day, as he was wrapping up, he decided to raid a fellow streamer. He picked one at random, that being Tubbo, who had zero viewers at the time. This jump started both of their streaming careers, and the two then began playing Hypixel together, mostly Skyblock, which we'll discuss more of later, eventually becoming good friends and going on to participate in SMP Earth and Minecraft Monday, where they met and befriended many of those who we're speaking about today. Tubbo is three months older than Tommy and is often seen as the more innocent younger brother to the rest of the streamers on the server. Tubbo has a great likability factor and bounces off Tommy with ease. In fact, he's one of the very few to be able to do so without finding extreme awkwardness. 
both Tommy and Tubbo benefit from their age. They can act better. They can follow a story with more dedication. Sure, they may get distracted and carried away at times, but often it's wholesome and leads to smirk-inducing moments. Mr. Beast took to Minecraft many years ago, in fact it's one of his channel's first public uploads, but with the dawn of Mr. Beast Gaming in May of 2020, he rediscovered the potential of the game. Reaching 13 million subscribers in just under 8 months time, the channel hosts epic building competitions and challenges for large amounts of money and prizes in classic Mr. Beast fashion, triggering trends aplenty across the site. With hundreds of thousands given away in 10k amounts on multiple videos, he also began jumping on the Minecraft butt trend, successfully gathering players together and recreating the infinite fun of Minecraft new and old. With Dream's channel rocketing, it was hard for the big guys not to take notice. Mr. Beast loves YouTube, especially when something crazy like the explosion we saw with the Minecraft manhunt happens. Plus with him starting his own gaming channel, it made perfect sense that Beast and Dream would eventually form a bromance. Through his relationship with Dream, Jimmy has also been able to have an impact on the Dream SMP, stopping by to set up special competitions once in a while, but we'll get to those after we discuss Beast's other gift to the Minecraft community, Carl Jacobs. Considering basically everyone affiliated with Jimmy gets involved in a video at some point, and originally an editor for the Mr. Bro channel, Carl eventually got his moment and starred in Last to Leave Halloween Candy wins $10,000. Soon after this, he became a regular on the main channel, becoming known as That Mr. Beast Guy by millions. He soon befriended some of the Dream Team over Twitter, enforced by Beast and Dream's interactions, and before long was also invited to the SMP as well as MCC, making friends with many creators along the way. Carl's chemistry with the likes of George, Sapnap, Quackity, and others caused him to rocket to notoriety, and of course, starring on the main Mr. Beast channel in pretty much every video kinda helped. He arguably became the center of attention and one of the most prominent members of the Beast crew, now pulling in plenty of viewers on his own when he streams with friends, regardless of whether Jimmy is present or not. I thought this was gonna be like some sort of... Like, cool play. Carl's infatuation with the Dream SMP even led to Mr. Beast logging on to create a hunt for the money type challenge. Not just once, but twice. The first being held on September 29th, 2020, where he hid a $10,000 Taco Bell gift card, and the next on December 28th, 2020, where he stepped up the game a little bit and hid $100,000 in assorted gift cards. The first time being found by Eret through tracking coords and positioning, and the second by Tubbo using a wall glitch of some kind. These events created a huge rush to the server, players streaming their perspectives in the hunt with thousands of viewers watching along as they would do a normal SMP storyline, bringing much needed entertainment in between plot events. Felix is a Minecraft YouTuber now. That's that's just how it is. He uploaded vanilla Let's Play content from June of 2019 to September of 2020, and he's just started up a hardcore world recently. The king of YouTube playing Minecraft undeniably impacted the gaming landscape, driving thousands of people back to the game once again. Even if they were just there to try out another survival world playthrough on 1.15 or 1.16, it was the communities and creators that sparked up and rose around and following this that captured the audience's hearts again. PewDiePie actually got involved in all this, participating in one of the July Minecraft Mondays in 2019, teaming with none other than James Charles and getting stuck right in. After covering the 1.16 features all but completely in his beloved vanilla world and dabbling in a few multiplayer collabs here and there, it was time for PewDiePie to take a break, before returning to start an entirely new journey. Saying goodbye to Sven, he left his Swedish meatball world and prepared for hardcore. I do wonder sometimes just how many creators have been inspired to return to Minecraft by PewDiePie and the others we've mentioned today. And I wonder how many wolves out there are called Sven, or how many bees are called Puff. I don't, I don't know, do people name their bees? I, I, moving on. Back in June 2019, Hypixel released their iteration of multiplayer Skyblock as a game mode on their server. This kicked up a lot of hype, and a new community began to generate around this, prominently made up of existing Hypixel veterans. 
Skyblock exploding in popularity is actually how the next person we're going to be talking about, Technoblade, came to be more widely known. He had already made a name for himself amongst the PvP community with a huge killstreak in Bed Wars, before that Sky Wars and even UHC. Now Skyblock was next. Throughout his series, he displayed his dedication to the craft and his ability to farm potatoes. By late 2019, Technoblade was renowned for his PvP skills and was called upon to participate in the tournament run by Keemstar called Minecraft Monday, where he needed expert Minecraft players. As Techno soared through the ranks, his skills began to gain traction amongst community members and created some genuinely hilarious reactions from streamers. He's got like this 200 IQ way of like knowing which order he should jump on the block so that he's able to maximize them. In my opinion, Technoblade's presence made Minecraft Monday, and his appearances were the highlight of the game for me. Checking streamer perspectives after the tournaments to see how people reacted to his skill became routine, and I'm sure it did for many others too. Technoblade in many ways embodies what this new generation of creators are all about. He's good at the game, can constantly surprise people, and his affinity for comedy and storytelling in video making is apparent. He's virtually connected to every thought I have on Minecraft PvP at this point. He and Dream in the eyes of the audience representing some of the very best Minecraft players out there. And seemingly this thought occurred to Jimmy as well, as he decided to pit them against each other in a multi-stage battle for $100,000. Techno eventually coming out on top and joining, you guessed it, the Dream SMP. Now, it should be no surprise to you that the Dream SMP is scripted. Aww, I hear you say. This creative spark came when Wilbursut appeared and began to guide the narrative along with plot points and character roles, ultimately climaxing with epic live war broadcasts from multiple perspectives. Preceding this, a number of creators have took to writing the story arcs of different characters on the server such as Dream and Technoblade. The whole SMP is truly thriving. And I think Wilbur is really a testament to what a little storytelling can do. Not just for a community of players, but for the audience watching along at home as well. I am a writer, and having been behind quite a few Minecraft shows and series narratives in the past myself, including things like The Crafting Dead and The Christmas Adventure, witnessing Wilbur's skills on display for all to see really inspires me and in some way makes me proud. I also respect him majorly for giving his music some more backing, releasing Your New Boyfriend on the 11th of December, gaining over 15 million views in just three weeks. Backed by massive support from all the fans and creators of the SMP, it even reached the trending page, placing above a Taylor Swift song no less. Her of course being famous for singing about ex-boyfriends. Wilbur is a great example of what a bit of subtle artistry can do for a whole community of creators. And in a way, the Dream SMP and Wilbur himself are a succession to the character-driven roleplays and creators that were so big just a few years ago. Maybe even a part of it is just that. The realism, or more live aspect of the SMP, really captures a more mature and unpredictable plot. There's improv involved, there's no perfect timings or hand-holding. It's a full speed roller coaster, something that viewers can appreciate more now that they're older. There's no doubting that Wilbur clearly saw something great in the people he had around him. In fact, he was actually the one who invited Tommy and thus Tomo to SMP Earth, which in turn caused them to meet everyone and end up in the Dream SMP. On another note, Filza has been making content for some time now and actually had a five year long running hardcore world which he became famous for covering on YouTube before iconically dying and losing. Covered by news sites and media outlets, he was distraught, but as tragic as this event was, it led Filza down a path to a newfound family. Filza met Wilbur Soot when in a group chat for Minecraft Monday. Keem randomly exclaimed that Phil and Wilbur were hardcore Minecrafters and asked if anyone was okay with them teaming. They then began to quickly DM one another joking about it, on stream then laughing with each other about getting kicked for having less streamers than the required amount, and ending their streams early to keep up the average viewership. 
This, together with a collab, was a great first start for Filza, finally reaching out to more people in the community. They once again met at TwitchCon, where Filza also met Jay Slat, another member of the SMP, and many other creators. Wilbur introduced Filza to a lot of players from the SMP Live server, which was still raging on at the time, and both eventually became friends with Technoblade through the event scene too. Since then, he's been embraced by the community and was even invited to join the Dream SMP to help Wilbur in a story on November 16th, 2020. Now, considering they appeared together in Mr. Beast's recent Christmas video, I figured mentioning them both together would be fitting, and it is kind of in a way, because Quackity and MatPat are both long-standing creators who have been making content on other topics for years that have risen to popularity amongst the Minecraft community all the same in this new generation. So how did they get swept up into all of this? Quackity started his YouTube channel in 2013 and created content for a game called Toontown. He continued to create commentary on the game even after it closed down, and eventually turned to general gaming content and social commentary as he got older. His videos saw a huge surge when on one day he covered a topic about Discord servers and began his now iconic series, Discord's Got Talent. Welcome gamers, in a server with over 50,000 members, we hosted the official Discord talent show. His content was satirical, meme and he was well known for his skits and antics. He started creating Minecraft content and streaming after being invited to the Dream SMP by Tommy. He's since been involved in MCC three separate times and appeared on Austin Show's Love or Host on Twitch, along with George Not Found, Dream, Sapnap, and Tommy. No way! That's Hello, right, it's Tommy in it, bro. Quackity's had some great moments, really getting stuck into the chaotic side of the server's story and having good banter with George and other members of the server. His laugh is contagious, and he'll often say the weirdest of things, usually accompanied by him dying. In fact, he's apparently died upwards of 600 times in the four months he's been around on the server. In an ironic way, his charisma and energy is encouraging and welcoming. A uniting force that makes everybody smile. We can bring him back to life. Don't we can do bring him back. You, why do you want to bring Jay Slat should... back? Don't you know how much how much problems that would cause if you revive him? Listen, I'm just saying, if we brought Jay Slat back to life, he could bring glory to our country once again. <laughs> Outside of the Dream SMP, there's another channel that's done some great work in 2019 and 2020 to unite the community. We of course mentioned MatPat, who owns the channel Game Theory, Film Theory, and Food Theory primarily. He's known for his wacky, connect the dot, conspiracy style videos, and he asks some really great questions. More specifically, with the rise of Minecraft once again, he began creating a theory series. Now, since 2014, MatPat had been making occasional videos for Minecraft, but it wasn't until this one that he really began to dig deep into the lore of the game itself, the story behind the world. Something that many had tried to figure out and piece together over years, but that MatPat had finally put together in a neat and well-described video. An ancient race of builders, long forgotten structures, dimension hopping evolution. This lore is likely regarded as canon by many at this point, or at least what people imagine the story of the game to be like. MatPat has found huge success with these videos, and has also recently made a theory about the Dream SMP itself, so he's clearly very interested in the community, and despite him technically creating other content like Quackity did, I believe they could both technically be included in this new Minecraft generation. There are obviously many rising stars that haven't been mentioned today. My parameters weren't specific, I just sort of plucked a few names out of a hat. Many upload or stream, some even play on the Dream SMP or at least have their own version of it and play with friends. Many have taken back to their old mantle of Minecraft YouTuber, proudly playing the game and uploading content once again. Whether re-inspired or simply joining in on the fun, we have people like Skeppy, Spifey, Neachu, Fundy, Jayshlat, guests like Vicstar, KSI, Corpse Husband, Pokimane, and Ninja. Who else is around right now? Luke the Notable, RT Game, It's Funny, Hermitcraft, everyone's had a really great year, and it's likely that 2021, with 1.17 coming up, will just get even crazier. Like the caves in the game, it's gonna all get bigger. It's all gonna get wider. That's, that's, the, that's the thing, that's the joke I'm going for. 
For the many not named, those unsung heroes that you know you subscribe to, who you know are part of this new generation that I sadly missed, then make sure to tell me in the comments below. I want to know why their content is so good, and I'll be sure to make a part 2 of some of the people that didn't get the time today. So, now that we've looked at the people and events that make up this new generation, what can we take from it all? What makes this huge explosion of creators what it is? In a way, this set of creators shares major aspects of prior generations. You can see inspiration from all the old creators in the content that appears nowadays, from challenges and speedrunning techniques, to roleplay storytelling and server community hosting. Almost cyclical in nature, history repeats itself, so to speak. The baseline is that Minecraft's new generation exists because of nostalgia and innovation. Specialization and sensationalization not only reflects the rising interest of Minecraft personalities, but a rising interest in gamers as a whole, in online personalities. More views across the board means more people are watching. A new generation of viewers exist and are waiting to be entertained. They're larger and more global than ever before. With easy access via social media to content creators and videos which are viral and iconic. As with all the generations prior, community has remained a central component, a catalyst for fun moments and great creator chemistry. In my opinion, it all comes down to Minecraft's ability to thrive with longevity. People want and need to explore new updates together, creating SMPs to interact with one another and share experiences. And this isn't just with vanilla Minecraft either. While nostalgic survival played a big part in the rebirth of Minecraft, Modability and plugins became a much more popularized thing again recently too, and is arguably the reason Minecraft has survived so long. The flexibility of the game itself eventually became its reason for rising once again. So what next? Where do we go from here? The Dream SMP continues to rage on, the next season of MCC is preparing, and as we look to the next year, I'm sure plenty of creators have stuff planned. I know I myself will be working hard to create more analytical and documentary style Minecraft content, so until then, we'll just have to see how it goes, what trends appear, and what creators rise and fall. If you like what you see, then make sure to subscribe to the channel. These videos take a really long time to prepare and a lot of work went into making this one the best that it could be. I have a lot of plans for the channel this year, especially with Hytale's beta coming up. Seriously, Hytale is expected to launch this year. You guys, subscribe, seriously. I'll keep trying to create engaging content and remember to go check out Core in the description down below. It's completely free. If you want to join a server with over 3,000 Minecraft and Hytale enthusiasts such as yourself, then make sure to become a part of the Quebec Corner Discord server via the link in the description. Continue smiling, thank you for liking, subscribing, and thanks as always for watching Quebec Corner. Stay safe and keep free.